Tinit. Tinit. Sinukat. <laughs> So our lesson for today, we're now moving on to chapter 2, which is random variables and probability distributions. Our lesson is random variables, lesson 1. The objectives that we are planning to hit for today is to illustrate a random variable, discrete and continuous, distinguish between a discrete and a continuous random variable, and to find the possible values of a random variable. Additional objectives is to illustrate examples of random variables and to appreciate the importance of a random variable through experiment. On your modules, there is a coin toss and breath holding activity that you must do first before going into this lesson. So you can pause the video now and do these activities first before going on. So those two activities are what we call statistical experiments. Now, a statistical experiment is an activity that will produce outcomes or a process that will generate data. These outcomes have a corresponding chance of occurrence. Now, in the first activity, the coin toss activity, all the possible answers are listed on the table as below. You have tail, tail, tail. You have TTH, THT, HTT, THH, HTH, head, head, tail, and finally head, 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 or HHH. They are divided according to the number of points based on the number of heads. In the breath holding activity, the results may be as follows. You can have 60 seconds, uh, 64 seconds, 58 seconds. Notice that in the first activity, the coin toss activity. Notice that in the first activity, the number of outcomes can be listed. However, for the second activity, which is the breath holding activity, the outcomes are unique to each individual. The data that you have gathered from the breath holding activity and from the coin toss activity are what we call random variables. So random variables, it is a way to map outcomes of a statistical experiment determined by chance into number usually denoted by a capital letter, usually X. It can also be any other capital letter you have. We can have Y as representation. You can also have A. Random variable is actually neither random nor a variable in a traditional sense of how we define variable in algebra class. To formally compare, you have there random variables and mathematical variables. Random variables, it has exactly one value for each random outcome, and your observations are linked in the real world where uncertainty is involved. But for mathematical variables, your values can be assigned and it has a certain value. Applying random variables in the real world, random variables are central to the use of probability in practice. They help model random phenomena. That is, random variables are relevant to a wide range of human activities and disciplines, including architecture, biology, ecology, economics, medicine, meteorology, physics, physiology, computer science, engineering, and others. They are used to model outcomes of random processes that cannot be predicted deterministically in advance. But the range of mathematical outcomes may, however, be viewed. So is there any other example that you can think of where random variables can be applied to these disciplines? As with your coin example and breath holding activities, in the coin example, we can define the random variable x to be the number of heads that appears from tossing a coin three times. While we do not know what the result of the specific outcome is, we know the possible values of x. In this case, if you toss a coin three times, you can either have zero heads, one head, two heads, or three heads. So your random variable takes the form of zero, one, two, and three. Going to the breath holding activity, you can also define another random variable, let's say now y, to be the time a person can hold his or her breath. It is, well, really difficult to list down all the possible values since these outcomes are unique to each individual. That is why in this example, it is better to state the possible values of an interval such as 10 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 60 if the lowest and highest values are 10 and 60 respectively you can also say that the, the range of the values falls between 10 to 60 inclusive meaning including the values 10 and 60 now there are two types of random variables you have their discrete and continuous in our table we have two categories differentiating the two you have number of possible values and then the type of variable. So if we have a, let's say, discrete random variable, the number of possible values for discrete random variable is a finite number of distinct values. 
Well, it, the type of variable for discrete random variable is the categorical. So, finite. In example, the number of heads obtained when tossing a coin thrice, the number of siblings a person has, the number of students present in a classroom at a given time, the number of crushes a person has at a particular time. So, it, when you say finite, it's an exact number. So, it's an exact number, meaning it's also a whole number. For categorical variables, in example, whether a person has normal BMI or not, we can assign 1 as the value for normal BMI or body mass index, and 0 for, well, not normal BMI. There can also be ordinal variables, like how much they like adobo on a scale of 1 to 10. Next, you have their continuous. So, you have infinite number of distinct values as the number of possible values, and then it's on a continuum. So, examples are the time a person can hold his or her breath, the height or weight or BMI of a person. If measured very accurately, the BMI, the time a person takes to bathe. The variables that a continuous random variable can have lie in, on a continuum. When we say continuum, it means interval. Examples are the following. You have their experiment. You have their random variables the possible values, and the type of random variable. For number one, say your experiment is to roll a pair of dice. Let's say we have here the sum of the numbers that appear in the pair of dice. Your possible values can be 2, meaning the two die will have the value 1 and 1, can be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12. Since we know the faces of the die to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so you add them 1 and 1, 2, 1 and 2, 3, and so on. So knowing this, looking at your possible value, we know that it's a finite number of possible values. We can list down all the possible outcomes. It's not on a continuum. So we can say that the type of random variable, it's under a discrete. For the second experiment, we're going to ask a friend about preparing for a quiz in statistics. Your random variable to be measured is how much time in hour he or she spent studying for this specific quiz. Your possible values can be 1, meaning 1 hour, or 1.5, meaning 1 and a half hours. You have 3, you have 0 0.5. Notice that it's not a finite number of possible values and it can lie on a continuum or an interval. So that type of random variable is continues. Next, you have the third example or the third experiment. Record family members' gender in a family with four children. So your random variables is the number of girls among the four children. So you can have zero girls, one girl, two girls, three girls, or four girls. So looking at these possible values, you have zero, one, two, three, four, which is beneath. So your type of random variable for that is Discrete. So there are more examples here on your module. You can try to write down the experiment, random variables, possible values, and the type of random variable. So wrapping up, we have there your random variable. It's not random and it's not a variable. It is a function. And then you have this, the type of random variable, discrete and continuous. When we say discrete, it's finite. Continuous, it's infinite. And then your discrete or categorical variables, while your continuous lie on a continuum, such as intervals. So that is it for your lesson one under chapter two. So very good. <laughs>